Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to another installment of Learning from Liaisons, Evictions, ARP Strategies, and more. Um, my name is Alian Anderson, and I am pleased to introduce today our lovely guest, Heather Baker, who is the Executive Director of Student Intervention and Support at Toledo Public Schools. And before we turn over to Heather to give us some of her um, amazing strategies that she's been using over there in Ohio, I just want to do a couple of quick housekeeping things for everyone who's joining us, especially for those who joined us for the first time. Welcome to you. And of course, definitely an equally special welcome to everyone who's been here before. Um, so if you have questions, throughout the webinar, you can look to the right hand side of your screen in the go to webinar panel, you will see a questions pane and you can drop your questions in there. This webinar is being recorded and everyone here will receive a recording of the webinar to watch back, share with others. After the webinar, it will be sent to you in your emails. You can also check out the handout pane where we have a list of eviction related and American Rescue Plan related resources for everyone's edification. So feel free to check that out too whenever you get the chance. And those will also be emailed as well. You can also find archives of the webinar on our archived webinar page on schoolhouseconnection.org. And if you have any other questions about anything, feel free to let me know in the Q&A, which everyone now knows about. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Heather. So Heather, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, about your district and your role? Okay, well, um, I, I wear many hats in the district and I think uh, especially now in, in, in the light of the pandemic, many of us uh, that work for school districts are wearing multiple hats to get the job done. Um, so currently, uh, I do supervise uh, our school nurses, our school counselors, um, our people placement department, which handles custody and discipline in the district and our positive school climate department. So excited to kind of have my, at my hands in a lot of pots um, and what it does allow me to do is to be kind of on the forefront of the work that's happening in the district and how we can make sure we're offering wraparound services to our families. Where our district is about 23,000 students. Um, we have 54 buildings in our district. We are an urban uh, district, one of the urban eights in Ohio. So we're, we're you know, a, a pretty big player in Ohio. Uh, or average, I shouldn't say big, but we have Cleveland and Columbus, of course, to compete with. But um, as far as homelessness though, we are a big player, unfortunately, here in Toledo. Um, it does hit us a little bit harder than some of the other cities. Okay, so speaking about that now, I guess we can jump right in. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the um, strategies that you've been using as it relates to um, eviction response and prevention and any of the general main trends that you've been seeing as it relates to eviction or families facing eviction or even just families who are already facing homelessness in yeah. your home. That has been an issue, especially lately with the moratorium on evictions being lifted. We've had more families um, that are experiencing um, it, at least getting notification that eviction is on the way. We have been blessed in our district to partner with a lot of agencies um, in the city of Toledo and actually the city of Toledo um, through some funding, um, through uh, ESG dollars and TIBRA dollars, uh, were able to provide some of these families that were facing eviction um, help. Um, where they were able to sign up for programming and um, financial opportunity coaching. Um, and with that, they were able to get a year's worth of rent paid. We were also able to pay some back utility bills for, for families and offer wraparound services and, and mental health and supports because we know it takes more than just um, showing up to school every day, right? If a student doesn't know where they're gonna sleep tonight, if they don't know what they're gonna eat tonight, you know, completing homework and getting to school is not on the top of the agenda. We have to make sure that those needs are met first um, about housing and where we're, where we're going to eat and where we're going to sleep. So uh, working with those partner agencies and working with the city of Toledo has been phenomenal. Our continual care um, agency is involved to the Lucas County Homelessness Board. Um, Lutheran Social Services is also a part of that um, a group that, that we're working with and Pathways of Toledo. 
Um, and these agencies have just been phenomenal as far as really what I think is a true continuum of care and what that looks like when you bring everyone to the table and we all put our resources in one pile and figure this thing out about how we can wrap services around these families that are experiencing homelessness. Awesome. And so Heather, just so um, like just in case there are liaisons here who um, aren't exactly familiar with some of these terms, can you explain a little bit more about like um, what ESG is and TBRA, the tenant based rental assistance and how you were able to make the connection with the city? What like what made them decide to funnel school um, funnel funds through the school and some of that stuff? Um, so I think it's all about being involved in your community, right? A lot of times when you work for a school district, many times you, you, you work in silos, we find, um, but I think our team has done a good job of serving on um, as many boards and other agencies as you can, being a, what I call a useful partner. So when they, they issue a call and they say, hey, we need someone to show up and, and, and sit on this board or come to this meeting, you know, be as active as you possibly can so that when you have to issue the call for help, um, your name pops up or is, you know, the first thought on their mind for, hey, I think she does homeless work. Um, I think that would be a good person for us to reach out to. When the city had these dollars to spend, um, because I believe our team is very visible we um, try to keep the uh, homeless awareness, the, you know, the issue of homelessness out on the front lines and we try to keep it in media as much as possible all year round. So they knew that we did the work. So when they, the funding became available, we were the, the first team that they called and they said, hey, we want to work directly with you to spend these dollars. We want to assist your family families that are experiencing homelessness. So I won't say it was, was good luck, but I really do believe it's about relationships and how you make those connections with the other agencies in your community that you know can really assist in the work. Um, for those, uh, I think you said uh, tenant-based rental assistance is TBRA, um, ESG Emergency Solutions Grant um, are, 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 are some of the funding pots that are, are being used to assist these families. Um, each of those have, have different rules that um, kind of rule how you're able to spend that money. But what's nice is we didn't have to be aware of exactly what those rules are. That's why it's important to set up relationships with agencies that they know those rules backwards and forwards. My job in this, or our team's job in this, was just to make sure that we are finding families um, that are in need of assistance, finding families that are, are, are close to being evicted or have been evicted, or families who are doubled up or actually homeless. Um, and, and that became you know, our part of the work. But when it came down to, well, hey, well, does this family fit more of an emergency solution grant? Or did this, does this family fit more into the pocket of tenant-based rental assistance? We had experts that that's all they do every day. Um, you know, so we can link with those agencies that, that knew the rules backwards and forwards and were able to decide where those families fit in. Um, but again, it's that communication and that relationship piece and making sure you're making yourself available as well to make those connections, being open. Awesome. Great advice. And um, so I remember when we spoke a few weeks ago, you also told us about um, some other community partners, such as like the Lutheran Social Services um, and some of the initiatives that you were um, like planning with them. So I was wondering, would you like to share a little bit or can you share a little bit more about that and like how you guys are able to use that to help parents in your community? So Lutheran Social Service has been a, an invaluable partner. Um, they house our financial opportunity coaches. I think it's amazing when you can find partners that can assist you in the work uh, of finding housing or putting families up in housing or paying rent. But if you don't um, offer the assistance on how to maintain the house, right? I can, it's, it's almost like the parable about giving someone a fish or teaching someone to fish. So what I like to do is both. I want to give you a fish right now because I know you're hungry, but I also want to teach you how to fish for yourself. Um, so what we're, we're trying to do is to work with our families and through Luther Social Services to set up those financial opportunity coaches. So for our families who may struggle with budgeting, for our families who may want to improve their credit, um, for our families who may want to just learn more about how they can make investments and, and different things they can do to, to maintain um, this, uh, uh, this apartment or this house once um, the, the grant funds are gone. 
um, that, that's the plan, to do both. So to provide a safe and affordable housing for our families. And even though we may be able to pay rent for this full year for you, but during this whole year, we want you to be saving. We want to be talking about investments. We want to be talking about budgeting and, and long-term. And we could not do that work without Lutheran Social Services. They've been an invaluable partner and have really helped quite a bit. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. And so I haven't seen any questions come in exactly yet um, related to the eviction, but I think it's because you were clear. Uh, but of course, everyone, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in. But I kind of want to go ahead and I think we can pivot a little bit to some of the plans that you have for using the American Rescue Plan Act funds. And for everyone who may not be super familiar with these funds, this refers to the $800 million that was included in the American Rescue Plan Act specifically for the purpose of identifying and meeting the needs of students who are experiencing homelessness and providing them with wraparound services and these funds are even more flexible than regular EHCY so so many things that can be done so Heather if you want to go ahead and just tell us some about the plans that you have there in Toledo we would love that Yes, ma'am. So excited that we were able to receive that funding for our district. The first round of funds um, ended up being $183,000 and some change, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is a lot. You can do so much with that. Um, with that, we were able to hire additional staff, um, what we call in our district contracted workers. So they're not necessarily district employees, but they understand that they're temporary uh, workers. But what's so amazing about the work they're going to be doing they're strictly focused on identification of homeless students, strictly focused on removing all barriers to enrollment, um, assisting families with gathering the appropriate documentation that's needed, um, just really being able to focus in on the work of identification. And then once you're engaged, how do we keep you engaged? How do we, um, you know, keep, keep you enrolled and, and keep you coming to school every day and on time because we all know that when families are experiencing housing crisis you know truancy is a huge issue because again attending school is not necessarily the first thing on your agenda or a parent's agenda when they're in crisis mode you know really it's all about survival at that time so how can we assist in removing those barriers how can we assist with some of these crises that you're experiencing in addition to the homelessness um, that or the housing crisis that will will help you be able to focus now on, on getting your student to school on time and sometimes it's it's simple barriers like transportation you know i have no way to get my student from you know uh this this new apartment complex that you've set us up in is is now all across it's across town from where the student was going to school how how am i you know do i need to transfer my student or or can my student stay in their their school of origin so setting up transportation to make that happen because we don't want a student to have to transfer each time a family has to move. We want them to stay in their school origin with their friends and their teachers and the people that they know so that their educational process stays as seamless as possible. Um, it, it's those type of, of strategies and things that we're, we're putting in place and those additional dollars allow us to do that in a much more effective manner and allow us to have more, more, more staff. Our team is not the largest team that works on this to be able to add to that team was very powerful and has had a huge impact for us, especially in, in this time, you know, with, with that, with, with what we're going through with COVID. And um, we have one question here that kind of goes back to the eviction stuff, but um, how have you been, Identi I'm sorry, not identifying, but how have you been able to do outreach to families and alert them that um, some of these funding parts are available? Or how do you identify them and alert them? Um, so uh, the city of Toledo uh, really took it upon themselves to do a huge, big uh, social media push. There was a big press release um, around this funding. Um, and it was, we, we, we kind of laugh about it now, but they did a press release before really any of the process had, had been set up. Um, so we were all scrambling behind the scenes to make sure that we, we had a process set up so that parents had a, a place to call, a phone number to call. They also had an email if they preferred that way, um, where we could directly link them to Lutheran Social Services to start the SPADAT um, uh, process to start, you know, the. Uh, where we're evaluating and assessing their needs and seeing what what needs to happen and seeing if they do have any income you know all the questions that come along with which pot of money is the best pot of money to to, to link you to um so that helped with advertising the dollars um in total we received close uh 1.6 million dollars in 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 that relationship with the city of toledo 
which that is a lot of money, but even that goes quickly. When you have families, some of our families had um, utility bills that were $10,000. Um, and then you add a year's worth of rent. And right now, everything, the price of everything has skyrocketed. So some of our, our larger families were looking $1,200, dollars $1,400 a month for two, two bedrooms. It, it, it has been, you know, that's a, that's a huge issue. So really pushing that, that message out with the press releases with media, social media, but also we have within our district uh, what we call Parent University, where we um, have parent cafes and other initiatives where we, we, we make videos and, and push those out to our par parents and families. We put posters up, we've got flyers up, we, we're all over the place really pushing that message about what uh, options are available, what resources are available um, here if you're a student with Toledo Public Schools and experiencing a housing crisis. I hope that answered that question. Okay. Yes, yeah, very much so. So we have another question, um, going back to transportation now, what options, what are some of the options that you've been able to provide to families for transportation? And has that shifted any at all during the pandemic? It, it has, um, just like every other entity, you know, I'm sure you all have experienced doing, if you've done any traveling or went out to get to eat, it, you know, staffing workers are hard to find. Everybody is experiencing a worker crisis. So we have had a reduction in staff as far as bus drivers um, and, and transportation has always been an issue for our families experiencing um, homelessness because you have to sometimes be creative with how you develop routes, um, bus routes and, and getting a student from this side of town all the way to the other side of town without having the student have to ride for and you know we want to make sure we're being student centered we don't want them on the bus for for hours um, or even a whole hour we want to keep it as small of a ride as possible um, so sometimes that requires cab rides or private transport when we're talking about smaller students which all of that costs money but again we are a student center district we we make decisions that are, are going to be what's best for students um, when other districts are involved for example you may have a, a student that was attending one of our suburban districts have maybe been in that suburban district their whole life um, but now they're living here they found housing in the the toledo area we will share in the cost of transporting that student back and forth between the districts, right? If they're here or, and maybe our two yellow buses can meet at the district lines, you know, we, we you kind of got to get creative and, and, and think outside of the box of how to make those things happen and, and to try to be as cost effective as possible. But cost is not the first thing to be considered. You know, of course, the first thing to be considered is the safety and what's the, the most or convenient for the student and the family. Um, I think, again, it boils down to relationships, knowing the districts that are, are surrounding you and the districts that you're gonna have to work with, having a relationship with a cab company in your area and the private transport, making sure all those uh, contracts are set up and ready to go so that when something happens, you don't just have to pick up the phone and, and, and get a parent or a student transported. And we do, we work with transporting parents too, because sometimes if a, a student is too young and we don't want them in a cab by themselves and, and, and or with private transport by themselves, or it could be a domestic violence situation, we will transport the parent with the child and transport parent back home and pick the parent up again to go get the child and bring them all back home. Whatever we have to do to make it happen um, is what we do. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. And another question um, related to ARP. So um, you mentioned what you guys have been able to do with the first round, but can you, um, like, what are your plans for the second round of funding? Are you still planning to use it for additional staff, for example? Yes, additional staff, additional staff, additional staff. I am really excited about that second round of program uh, funding because I think we can do some some extensive programming. Um, our our grant dollars have you know probably like a lot of other people's grant dollars uh, have shrunk sometimes over the years and and funding has been scarce so some programming has had to be decreased um, as far as our after school programming and, and the cost of transportation so with these additional dollars which is quite a bit um, I'm looking forward to hiring additional staff and to continue to expand our identification um, and enrollment process but also um, our after school enrichment and, and our programming um, I'm really excited to, to put some trauma-informed care practices in place and do more PD around that work we know know um, a lot of our families and not just our families and students that are experiencing homelessness everybody including us um, have experienced trauma on a far greater scale than than any of us have had to deal with before 
So really pushing that self-care message that we as educators and the people that are involved in servicing these students and families are, are paying attention to yourself and making sure you're okay um, in, 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 in practicing self-care, but teaching our families how to do that too. Um, making sure our staff and our teachers are doing that too. Um, really just pushing those trauma-informed practices. We understand that if a family's had a house fire or if a family's been evicted or something traumatic like that has happened, if Johnny makes it to school tomorrow, Johnny's going to need to be handled with a little uh, soft care, handled with care, right? If he has an outburst or meltdown, it is based off of trauma that's being manifested from a different place. So our, um, the way we look at that or the way he's disciplined or, or how we handle that should totally be different and should totally be looked at through the lens of, of trauma-informed care. So really putting some funding around that and making sure all district staff are trained in that um, and offering um, a lot of self-care uh classes and, and different uh, professional development for our families and two things, things like that onto the community. I am so excited about that because we know mental health supports, you know, are huge and needed. I could rattle on about that all day. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure none of us would mind, <laughs> but we do have um, another question. So you mentioned the parent in university. So um, we have a question asking if you can just share a little bit more information about that. What are some of the logistics? What subjects are discussed? And what has the parental response been thus far? And what has attendance been like? I know that's a, a, a bit wrapped up. No, no, that's fine. It has not, attendance has not been great lately. You know, with, with having to switch things from something that was in person to uh, then virtual. Um, we've changed the, the titles a, 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 a little bit. Uh, of what we call it to, to, to try to make it more attractive. Previously before, prior to COVID, we were having in-person classes and we placed them throughout the community. So no matter where you were at, whatever learning community you were in, it was easy access to get to the live. We didn't hold them at schools either. We held them at library and other community places because um, anyone that's in education, you, you, you know that not every single parent or every single community member has a positive relationship with the school district, right? Some people have some negative feelings or, or some issues where they may maybe don't feel the most comfortable coming into our buildings. We want to make them as warm and welcoming as possible, but we also want to make sure that you coming to a building is not a must. Um, we want to bring services out to the community and bring services to you to where it's most convenient for you. So we held a lot of those classes in libraries and other community agencies um, to make it easy accessible. And for those that maybe just didn't feel comfortable coming into a building, here you go. So we put these classes out. It could be anywhere on the student discipline code, um, self-care, uh, trauma-informed care. I'm trying to think through all the top homelessness. Definitely has always been one of the topics that we've, we've focused on. Um, the one, two, threes of kindergarten, um, how to best prepare your, your little person for preschool. I mean, the topics range. I mean, they, they've, been, they've done so many great things. But what I think is nice about how our, our Elena Rodriguez is who oversees that here in our district. She does an amazing job of asking our parents, what do you want to see? Um, lately, it's been a lot on FAFSA um, and really pushing that initiative of, of how you make that connection, you know, that bridge that gap from graduating to high school and being prepared to go into college. And she's even done um, special FAFSA nights for just our families that are experiencing ho homelessness because we know uh, that they have uh, other additional um, barriers and, and, and issues with getting to college. So she, she's done a really great job of tailoring those classes um, to what our community and our parents and families are asking for. So it, it, I, I cannot even come up with the full list of all, because there's been so many cool ones. Um, but lately it has been mostly virtual videos that we will email out to families or post on our district website um, views eventually do pick up, and but sometimes it takes weeks and weeks to get, you know, a high number of views, but people are watching. But we're looking forward to really being able to get back in person because we felt like that face-to-face -face interaction was really very valuable for our parents. Okay, so we just grandparents, aunts and uncles, it didn't have to just be parents, really family members, because we know family structure is a lot different now, and, and we've got families, you know, students that are living with sisters and siblings even older siblings so you know it wasn't just strictly to parents it's, it's, it's your guardian or, or whomever wants to come and engage and learn awesome that sounds like so that sounds so great um so another question to tack onto that what kind of information do you guys include in the homelessness topic because of course like you know there's so much that can be covered within that so like um what what do you guys what areas do you guys focus on 
or things it, you try to do if we're talking them. about in in those parent cafes or with our parents um we focus on what services are available um for example many of our our families um if they uh were evicted or um you know had to change uh, housing or maybe found themselves in a shelter across town from where they were at before many didn't know that they didn't have to transfer their student so they would uh i mean didn't know that they could keep their student where they were they assumed they had to transfer their student so they would transfer their student and some bounced around before they knew about our services so we had to make sure we're getting that information out to our families so that they're aware no we want your student as stable as possible we want to assist with that. Um, we want to offer as much support as we can to to make sure you, you you feel like you're not in this alone. Of course, they're not alone. We know a lot of families are experiencing this. Um, so if it's one of those parent nights or, or, or parent cafe, that's the information that we're given more about the resources and what our team can do. And if it's a need that we can't meet, 99% of the time we've got an agency or a partnership with someone that can meet that need. So we just pull all those te teams and people and resources together and really give them a, a great idea of all the things that we can do to assist. Um, if it's PD within the district to our staff, the conversation is somewhat the same because a lot of times our, our students or a family member will tell a, a teacher or someone in the building, hey, this is what's happening to me or, or your student may tell their teacher I'm couch surfing. Um, you know, and, and that information wouldn't get to us if our teachers didn't know or if our staff members didn't know of the services that we offer in the district, you know, it's a it's a pretty large district, and so we have to work really hard to make sure that information has gotten out to everybody and everyone's aware uh, of the resources and what we can do to, to assist those families. Okay, thank you so much, Heather. And um, while I wait to see if like um, if we get some more questions coming in, I just want to ask you if there is one thing that you could leave with everyone today, or one bit of information, or just something that you feel would help them um, better carry out whether it's eviction response in their districts or something related to ARP or both. You can also share both. What would you leave with everyone? Oh wow, well, I. Um, I I would say that the biggest thing about this work is, is really relationships. It, it, the one year we absolutely we lost our whole McKinney Vento grant um, and we had gotten the grant for 15, 16 years plus. And so it was one of those things that we did not think that can happen. You know, anytime anyone writes a grant, they always ask you for what would your plan be if this you lost this funding? And you write a plan out, not thinking that's ever gonna happen, but it actually happened. But I have to say that was the best thing that ever could have happened to us as a district because it forced us out of our silo. It forced us to make relationships and partnerships with other community agencies to see what other resources were out there. And I have to say Toledo is amazing. Our community stepped up in a big way and our students did not miss a beat. We absolutely missed nothing. We were able to still provide programming, still provide transportation, school supplies, school uniforms, whatever the need was, our community met it and in a big way. Um, so I think as a, a liaison, the, the best thing you can do is, first of all, know the other liaisons in your area. Students are, here in Toledo, we have a very mobile population. So students bounce back and forth between the districts all the time. And it's so easy and nice to be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, I, I, you've got a student that I think has landed over in your district. This is the services that we've offered to help. How can we assist to, to bridge that, that gap and make sure those services are continuing? Just that, that type of relationship. We started prior to COVID here in Toledo, um, a liaisons group where all the liaisons in our suburban districts, we would invite them here um, to have, a, we, we do it in the community, so we're not necessarily here to lead the public schools, but where we lead the conversation. Hey, this is what it means to be a li liaison. This, these are the things we're doing. What are you doing in your district? And exchange ideas and, and have conversations about the resources that are not just in Toledo, but in Lucas County and how we can tap into um, those resources and what different things we can do to assist each other. There's power and partnerships. So I would say that would be one of the things that I would leave in just compassion, right? In this work, um, but for the grace of God, this could be any of us, right? So I think just really understanding that these families need compassion more than, um, you know, anything, just understanding um, compassion and patience um, and working with these families, um, I think that's important. Awesome. Thank you so, so, so much, Heather. Um, so um, I haven't seen any more questions roll in, uh, but Heather, I definitely want to, I think I speak for everyone here when I say like a 
a big thank you to you for sharing all that you did today. And of course, thank you to all of our lovely attendees for joining us as well. I hope everyone um, was able to get something from it. And we're happy to see everyone's questions earlier. And we love the participation, of course. And I hope I want you're getting thanks in, in, in the chat box as well. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Heather, again. And I hope, of course, and I hope everyone will be able to join us next week um, when we go to Canton City. And we'll also be having a provider join us on that call as well. So if you're curious of hearing um, more about that or anything from the provider perspective, or if you have any questions for them, then of course, join us for that. But with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.